um, page there where you can access an antibiotic personality quiz that was uh, done by Brad Langford and his team in uh, Public Health Ontario. Um, just as a, a fun little exercise and uh, and see which antibiotic personality you match up with. Um, and uh, and feel free to to share the antibiotic that you match up with in the in the chat box um, just as a fun little exercise. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, it's my pleasure to uh, chat today about a project uh, that we did and talk about uh, some of the benefits of um, antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, themed escape rooms and using that as an educational platform uh, for internal medicine residents. So uh, before I begin, as a, as a land acknowledgement, as we gather here today, we acknowledge we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. So I have two major objectives for today's presentation. Uh, firstly, we're going to discuss the value of escape rooms in medical education. And then secondly, I'll present some results from a local antimicrobial stewardship themed escape room educational activity for internal medicine residents. So when we look at the landscape of medical education, we can see evolution and a huge surge of uh, educational games and serious games in medical education that ranges from the use of video games and mobile apps to tabletop games and board games uh, to help trainees learn about values and principles uh, particular to different fields. And we're certainly seeing a surge of these types of games in uh, relating to infectious diseases and antimicrobial stewardship. So an escape room is another uh, platform and type of game that we're seeing a huge uh, rise in in terms of prevalence and, and utility and value in medical education. Uh, an escape room is essentially a serious game where learners and players are trapped in a locked room and have to solve a series of puzzles and uh, um, mysteries in order to escape the locked room. And we're certainly seeing that uh, escape rooms are gaining prominence in medical education as experiential learning and uh, simulation based learning as a, an exercise that emphasizes the importance of teamwork, collaboration and uh, communication as well. So we are seeing escape rooms gaining prominence as educational platforms, and these may be an effective tool to help students work collaboratively and communicate as a group. And I think that highlights the importance of antimicrobial stewardship, where we see a huge emphasis on the value of collaboration and communication in antimicrobial stewardship as well. Escape rooms are an innovative tool in medical education that augments knowledge acquisition complements medical simulation based learning and can consolidate our traditional approaches to teaching antimicrobial stewardship. Escape rooms in medical education create an innovative learning environment, expanding opportunities to engage staff and promote high quality care for improved patient outcomes. Prior literature has also shown escape rooms to be an effective tool in medical education for a variety of disciplines. These include nursing, emergency medicine, critical care, radiology, dermatology, and, and more as well. Escape rooms can be a very creative opportunity that fosters progressive, uh, fun, evidence-based learning environments and may positively impact uh, patient outcomes as well. So when I did a literature review looking at escape rooms in medical education over the last uh, few years, we've certainly seen a rise in escape rooms being used in nursing, as well as being used in emergency medicine, especially as a tool that emphasizes collaborative, uh, collaborative learning and teamwork. Uh, dermatology, um, toxicology, uh, general surgery, um, as well as radiology as well. This is an example of one of the studies that looked at the value of uh, an escape room uh, when it was implemented at a radiology conference. And this was held during orientation for incoming radiology residents and for upper level residents and faculty. And they repeated this exercise 
uh, 27 times for a total of 144 residents from more than 10 countries at the Radiological Society of North America in 2018. Um, and from their study and their data, some things that stood out for me is that they saw on a survey from um, from respondents and players using a Likert scale from one to five, uh, that they saw um, high rates of learners enjoying the escape room activity and preferring this mode of learning to didactic lectures. Um, and then also seeing that this type of exercise helped them to retain information relevant to radiology and also identify their own knowledge gaps and things that they may need to improve upon and learn more about outside of the escape room activity. And then also, as I mentioned before, um, high rates of the escape room encouraging communication skills, collaboration skills, and also leadership skills. And I think all of these resonate with us as antimicrobial stewardship champions and the value of these skills uh, when we're collaborating with healthcare professionals in different uh, different settings. So the next thing I want to do is talk about our local antimicrobial stewardship escape room activity um, that we held for internal medicine residents. So again, just as a background, while there is emerging literature regarding the utility of escape rooms themed around sepsis management and infection control, I actually couldn't find a whole lot of uh, antimicrobial stewardship themed escape rooms that have been published in the literature thus far. So I think this was a novel opportunity to create an antimicrobial stewardship themed escape room and study its impact, especially with a new generation of millennial and Gen Z learners um, that are making up the majority of current postgrad medical education cohorts and are often described as being technologically adept goal-oriented and socially confident, valuing choice, variety, collaborative learning, and teamwork. Our study was deemed exempt from the University of Saskatchewan Research Ethics Board. We followed a six-step process with respect to creating and designing our antimicrobial stewardship-themed escape room that's um, published in the literature. So the six steps involved identifying, firstly, identifying educational objectives, we selected objectives from internal medicine objectives of training through the Royal College of Physician Surgeons of Canada and identified 10 objectives that were particularly relevant to internal medicine and themed around infectious disease and antimicrobial stewardship. We then developed 10 uh, puzzles or so based around each of those educational objectives, gamifying those objectives with, with a series of puzzles. Uh, we then built our puzzles with a variety of different resources, and I'll show you some pictures and images of our escape room. Um, we also collaborated with our simulation labs in Saskatoon and Regina on, on campus to um, have a space for our escape room, and then also use um, the technology uh, to really emphasize simulation-based learning. Um, once we assembled and built all of our puzzles, we also created briefing, debriefing, and evaluation materials, which is a, a very um, important aspect of delivering an antimicrobial, delivering an escape room in medical education, um, having really solid briefing and debriefing materials to uh, orient the players and the learners. And then uh, before going live, we play tested our escape room with second year internal medicine residents and other colleagues to make some final adjustments and refinements before going live um, with our incoming first year internal medicine residents. So these are the 10 objectives. Um, I won't go through each of them, but I'll leave these on the on the um, page for you to, to read um, and I'll, I'll just go over some of them. Um, these were the 10 objectives that we selected from uh, objectives of training for internal medicine that we felt were particularly relevant uh, to infectious disease and antimicrobial stewardship. So understanding the value of guideline-based empiric antimicrobial therapies for common community and hospital-acquired infections, describing antimicrobials with spectrum of activity against multidrug-resistant pathogens, listing adverse effects and risk of C. difficile infection associated with different antimicrobials, describing the importance of reflecting upon local antimicrobial resistance patterns and the value and utility of antibiograms, correlating pathogens correctly based upon a gram stain culture report, 
Um, and then some other ones were uh, understanding the importance of avoiding prescribing antibiotics for certain conditions such as asymptomatic bacteriuria, listing antimicrobials with high oral bioavailability, the value of prescribing shorter durations of therapy for different infectious disease syndromes, which is certainly a, a hot topic in antimicrobial stewardship, appreciating different susceptibility techniques used in micro to determine susceptibility patterns, and then describing the value and importance of, of general antimicrobial stewardship uh, principles. This was a preamble that we read out to the um, players prior to them entering the escape room, which, um, solidified the objective of the game. Um, essentially, the preamble read that um, Sir Alexander Fleming had fallen ill to a mysterious infectious disease. In order to save him, the players have to find the five rights of antimicrobial stewardship, the right patient, the right antibiotic, the right dose, the right route, and the right duration. Uh, and they had 70 minutes in the escape room to solve a variety of puzzles and escape uh, from the escape room. So here are some images of our escape room where we used uh, two-way mirrors in order to uh, watch the players during the escape room as they solve different puzzles, monitor their progress, and also be available to provide hints and support uh, as needed. Uh, in the escape room itself, we were able to control um, different monitors and technology uh, with to, to change things on the screens uh, to provide further clues and could also uh, speak through Sir Alexander Fleming, um, uh, who was uh, portrayed in the mannequin um, in order to provide uh, additional clues and hints and also communicate with our players and learners as needed. Uh, we used a variety of different locks and puzzles um, to gamify our escape room. Um, there were uh, padlocks, direction locks, um, light boxes, um, and, uh, and, and other uh, locks that reintegrated into the escape room as well. Uh, this puzzle um, uh, was about putting anti different antimicrobials in certain orders that would correspond to empiric therapies recommended for a variety of different conditions. And when they were placed in the correct order and the correct um, fashion, they would then add up the total of those antimicrobials from an antimicrobial formulary to then uh, find out the code to unlock the next uh, puzzle. So we had a hidden antimicrobial formulary in our escape room. Um, that had the cost associated with each of those antimicrobials. And so when they placed them in the correct order, they could add up the cost and then unlock this next uh, box for the next clue. Um, again, this kind of shows a, a general overview of some of the different boxes and puzzles in our escape room. We had backpacks and um, a laptop was available in the room for students and players to access first line uh, in order to also access more data. Um, and this kind of shows some more clues here as well. So I'll highlight this next one um, where they had to correspond antimicrobials with associated side effects in order to cross out uh, certain numbers and then be left with certain numbers remaining that would unlock the next box if they uh, cross things out correctly with the associated side effects. Um, this uh, clue on the left, um, this puzzle helped learners identify pathogens. So when they followed the pathogens in the correct direction based upon the gram stain um, image, they were able to create a letter or a number. In the top right, there were folders with a variety of patients with positive urine cultures and then uh, patient profiles uh, where they could identify which patients correctly needed treatment for asymptomatic bacteriuria. And then in the bottom right, um, this puzzle emphasized the importance of understanding how different antimicrobials are associated with different risk of C. difficile infection uh, and correlating that to an un unlock another puzzle. Um, and then we also wanted uh, learners to gain understanding about susceptibility techniques performed in microbiology laboratories. So we used a light switch box, which corresponded to whether an antimicrobial uh, to whether a pathogen was susceptible or resistant to different antimicrobials. And when the toggle box was placed in the right directions, then the light switch would turn on in order for them to advance to the next puzzle. 
Um, we also had USB keys that were locked with a code. Um, and this uh, also emphasized um, the value of looking at local susceptibility rates uh, to, to uh, understand the importance of local resistance patterns uh, when prescribing antimicrobials. Um, so for example, understanding high rates of clindamycin resistance with our MRSA isolates, and then rising rates of macrolide resistance to streptococcus pneumoniae. This is an example of one of the metals that they found. So over the course of the escape room, uh, they had to find uh, five of those metals um, in order to, to solve the escape room. We also collaborated with um, Dr. Glockenflecken from uh, TikTok in order to provide one of our clues as well. And so um, he, in, in a video I'll show you, he created TikTok or created a video through Cameo for us to give clues. And uh, those corresponded to a compass lock um, and a map in the uh, escape room with um, different antimicrobials for different directions in order for them to solve the direction lock and then advance to the next puzzle. So I'll show you the video that he recorded for us. Oh, I guess I'm seeing that some people are unable to hear the audio. So my apologies. Um, I'll try and figure that out for later. Um, but uh, Dr. Glockenflecken was um, fantastic at uh, giving us um, clues uh, for our escape room. Uh, so sorry, you can't hear, you can't hear the video. Um, needless to say, it was um, funny uh, and the residents did enjoy it. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about the data. So, um, as I mentioned, when creating an escape room, it's really important to have really solid briefing and debriefing materials to orient the learners. And the debriefing is very important to then go through those clues after the escape room uh, in order to reinforce the learning objectives and the ideas and themes around those clues um, and how they relate to antimicrobial stewardship. So it really emphasizes an opportunity for learner reflection and reinforcing, uh, reinforcing learning. So uh, for the evaluation piece, we, we used a retrospective pre-post self-assessment for 10 objectives using a five-point Likert scale. Um, the advantages of this type of learning tool evaluation is it reduces response shift bi uh, bias. Um, it's valid. It's also very convenient because you're just doing the evaluation at, um, at one point in time versus pre and post escape room. There are some disadvantages, including potential for social desirability bias, but we went with this approach because it was simple and clean and had been used to study uh, escape rooms uh, in prior literature. So here's what our data showed. We had six antimicrobial stewardship escape room sessions um, that we held with 24 PGY1, so first year internal medicine residents, with each team consisting of three to five residents. Each escape room session had a 10 minute orientation and briefing session. They had up to 70 minutes in the escape room session itself. And then there was 20 minutes for debriefing and evaluation. So of our six teams, five of six successfully escaped the escape room with an average time of 47 minutes and six seconds of that total of 70 minutes. 
Um, during the escape room, we also had three to four hints that they could uh, use um, to help them uh, throughout the throughout the escape room and, and whichever puzzles they might have needed help with. So with our um, evaluation tool, these um, graphs, as an example, show you the average pre-score and post-score, um, uh, so how well they felt that they could meet this particular objective, reflecting on the value of local antimicrobial resistance patterns and utility of antibiograms. So each thin line are the 24 students of individual scores before and after the escape room that they um, uh, reflected upon, and then the thicker purple line represents the um, mean score for all 24 participants pre versus post. So I've summarized the results for all of our 10 objectives in this table. Um, here you can see in the different columns our 10 objectives, the mean pre-score, the mean post-score, the mean change, and then the statistical significance when we performed a Wilcoxon signed rank test. So overall, all of our um, scores improved over time with a positive improvement in terms of uh, perception of being able to meet those objectives following the escape room session. We also performed a Bonferroni correction given the number of statistical tests that we were performing and our results still remain statistically significant after that correction as well. We also collected narrative feedback from our internal medicine residents after the escape room session. Um, and so some things that stood out for me were the residents reflecting upon this activity being enjoyable, fun, effective, and also promoting knowledge translation. Um, with some also narrative feedback gathered, there were some three quotes that really stood out to me. One resident commented this was a great interactive way to dive into antimicrobial stewardship, would recommend to all residents in any program. Another resident commented, debrief session was very useful, great learning exercise, but also improved confidence and identified gaps, an extremely fun way to learn. And another resident commented, was a fun and interactive experience that promoted recall and new learning within ID and antimicrobial stewardship. So I think we can reflect upon this activity. I feel that escape rooms can be an example of an activity um, in medical education that is more learner-centered, team-based, and certainly that's important when we think about educational strategies to promote antimicrobial stewardship in order to promote safe, modern healthcare and optimize patient outcomes. Overall, residents felt that the antimicrobial stewardship escape room was positive and they perceived learning uh, through this innovative activity. Certainly, this is not the only way to teach concepts related to antimicrobial stewardship, but I think it's an additional tool that we can certainly harness in order to uh, teach antimicrobial stewardship and is one strategy to augment our traditional approaches to teaching infectious diseases and antimicrobial stewardship. Certainly, I think we need more data and studies are needed to determine long-term retention of knowledge, whether this type of learning activity actually changes prescribing patterns at the bedside and improves patient outcomes as well. There were some limitations um, to this uh, escape room in terms of labor, logistics, and coordination, which may make it um, challenging for certain centers to replicate. Um, there's also potential for social desirability bias with the retrospective pretest model. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, this doesn't assess long term retention or impact directly on uh, prescribing practices. We're excited to explore this type of approach in medical education. So I've been collaborating with our um, internal medicine program to implement antimicrobial stewardship escape rooms for incoming PGY1 residents again this year. And then also looking at potentially collaborating with undergraduate medical education, as well as other programs um, to look at the value of antimicrobial stewardship themed escape rooms in medical education. We're also uh, working with a team to look into interdisciplinary antimicrobial stewardship escape rooms, as well as potentially virtual platforms, um, which may also be um, more useful in terms of getting around logistics and coordination and physical spaces. Um, so using a virtual uh, platform as well.
Um, so I did want to acknowledge our collaborators on this project, um, Chantal, Dr. Joshua Lawson, and Dr. Marcel Dayon. We are working towards publishing our results and have um, presented our results at um, a medical education conference uh, um, that was held in Calgary this year. I also want to acknowledge our play testers, the University of Saskatchewan uh, Clinical Learning Resource Center and Simulation Labs, the PGME Internal Medicine Residency Training Program, um, Dr. Will Flannery and Sparrow Coffee for also providing us some of the clues and puzzles and um, materials for our escape room. And then finally, I'll just end with a quote, an ancient Chinese proverb, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. I'm happy to answer any questions and chat further about uh, this project. I will stop recording here. Okay.